Okay, so I've drawn out the model again and just kind of magnified what's going on in long-term memory because there's, there's some other things I need to talk about here. Okay, so um, what we do, if we're trying to get a computer to behave like a human being, basically, then we have to introduce variability into the system. And as I say, one of the areas that's obvious is uh, memory. Human memory is fallible, it's variable. So in order to get the computer to do it, what we do is we imagine that in long-term memory, the standard duration that we've told them to remember is stored with some fuzziness, it's stored with variability, it's basically stored as a distribution of values. Okay? So you have a distribution of values, a normal distribution, and the mean of this distribution will be whatever the standard value is. So let's just imagine that in the experiment, um, the standard we gave was 400 milliseconds. Okay? Um, and th this, this the, the, the width of this distribution, the variability of this distribution, is controlled by a parameter called C. Okay? So the larger the variability of memory, the larger this value C. Okay? And C is going to control what value we get, we get for S. So the, the idea is that on each trial, the computer, just like the human being, goes into their memory of what the standard is and picks out a value out of this distribution. Okay? You can see that most of the time it's going to pick a value that's around the, around the mean. Occasionally it's going to be one that's a lot shorter or one that's a lot longer. And how, how variable this is, or how accurate this is, is controlled by this, by this parameter C. Okay? That, that's one thing. So on each, on each trial we're going to be getting a value for S that we, we plug into this equation and decide whether to say yes or no. Uh, to make things slightly more complicated, um, if you remember when we talked about modelling children's data, then children do this weird thing where they have a tendency to remember the duration, the standard duration as being shorter than it actually was. Okay? So we need a parameter here that controls not the variability, but where this mean is located. Okay? So if the children are systematically remembering the duration as being shorter than it actually was, then their mean is going to be located somewhere else. They're going to have a distribution that's shifted over, over to the left. And we control where the mean is by another parameter called k. Okay? So if k is larger than 1, then it shifts the, 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 the distribution this way. If it's less than 1, it shifts it that way. And if you go back and look at the lecture slides when I talked about um, the children data, modeling the children data, then you need a, a, a k value that's less than 1 in order to model it. Okay? Um, okay, so you've got these two parameters which are controlling what the computer is using for S on each trial. We've got um, the threshold which we set down here. Okay? Now comes the clever bit. What we do is we run thousands, well, literally thousands, 10,000 trials of the experiment on the computer, putting in different values for C, different values for K, and different values for B. Okay? We do it thousands and thousands of times. Okay? And what will happen is that eventually, so if this is our um, this, this is our data we've got from the young old people, for example. Okay, so this is the, the data we've got. What we do is we run the computer using lots of different values for this, this, and this, lots of different combinations of values, until the data from the computer matches the data that we got from the young old people. Okay, so basically, the, the computer using this system and using a certain set of, of values, of numbers, has produced exactly the same data as our um, subjects. Okay? Okay, so we, we, we then have a set of values for the, the computer had to use in order to fit the data from the young old people. Okay, then we run the whole thing again. But this time, we get it to fit the data from, from the old, old people. Okay? So we have a different set of data there. If you remember, it's a flatter function. We get a computer to run thousands and thousands of trials using different parameter values, different combinations of values, until its data matches that of the old, old people. Then we simply ask that we go back to the computer and say, what was it you had to change between modeling the young old data and fitting and modeling the old, old data? What parameter value was it that you had to change? Okay? And if you go back and look at when we talked about this, I showed you the values that the computer used, and the one that had to change was C, how variable their long-term memory for duration was. Okay? So the difference between the, the young old and the old old 
was how variable their memory was. It wasn't anything to do with their decision processes, it wasn't anything to do with any kind of distortion parameter. Okay, they weren't shifted systematically left or right. When we do the same thing with children, we find that um, for young children versus adults, the young children have a greater um, memory variability, so a bigger C parameter. So it's getting a bit messy there. Um, and, the, and the very young children, in order to model the data, they have a K that's less than 1. Once they get to about 8 years old and above into adulthood, then K is generally equal to 1. But for the young, very young children, K has to be less than 1. Uh, and they're, they're also um, more excitable with their decision threshold. Okay, so that's how you model temporal generalisation data with the scale expectancy theory model. Now, one of the questions I've been getting on the email is that in the Cormac et al. study, they did some modelling on temporal generalisation data from children, but they didn't quite use this model. Um, they, they weren't as specific about where the variability was coming from. Okay? So in SCT, we're, we're very clear that the main source of variability is a long-term memory for duration, and the decision threshold. For the McCormack model, they just have a parameter which is called noise. Okay? And you, basically, they, they, they say there's variability in the system, which they find declines with age, but they don't attribute it to any particular part of the system. Okay? So basically, you can think of this as being the same as C. It does the same thing in their model, but in the McCormack paper, um, they're more reluctant to, to decide where um, this variability is actually coming from. Whereas in the scale of timing theory, um, it's more um, direct about say, arguing that it's coming from the timing system. Okay? And there are complicated mathematical reasons for, for, for thinking this, which um, you don't need to worry about at this stage. Um, okay, hopefully uh, that little talk, in combination with going back over your lectures, has made that a little bit clearer for you. Uh, do keep your feedback and comments coming. Um, it's really, really useful to, for me. Okay, thank you.